everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Fertility Chats with Vita Lab. And today we are at KZN's Vita Lab in Umschlanga with Dr. Sky. She has been with Vita Lab since the uh, beginning of 2021 and she's a specialist gynecologist with an interest in infertility. So welcome Dr. Sky and um, yeah, today we will be discussing male infertility. Great, thank you so much for having me. Now, male infertility is a bigger problem than people think. Often people think about infertility and they immediately think, oh, it's a problem with the woman. But actually, male infertility accounts for about one third of infertility cases. It's quite uh, high. Yeah, yeah, female infertility is the other third. And then, um, interestingly, the last third is a combined male and female mm -hmm. infertility. So it's, it's an important topic. So can you maybe give us an explanation of what is male infertility? So that for those who haven't dealt with it before, just have a more clear understanding of what male infertility actually means. Sure. So infertility is the inability to conceive after regular intercourse for a period of one year. And once a couple finds themselves in that situation, then they will need to come to a fertility specialist and they'll have certain um, investigations to try to figure out where the problem lies. Male infertility is when the problem lies with the male. So there are many different causes for male infertility. Some of those causes are lifestyle. So the lifestyle things are smoking, it's a big one. It affects the mobility of your sperm, um, obesity, and things like cycling. Um, for long periods of time, so don't freak out just because you're a cyclist doesn't mean you're going to be infertile. But <laughs> if you're on your bike for six hours a day, then that pressure and that increased temperature can have an effect on your sperm quality. Okay. Then and are on those long lasting effects, or because sperm, re sperm like regenerates quite often, is it something that can easily be fixed? You're right, that's a really good question. So, sperm is made every 120 days, so every three months you get a new batch. So no, it's not a long lasting thing. The lifestyle factors are more uh, transient and if you correct them, then your fertility can improve. Mm -hmm. That however is not the case if you're born with a, a male infertility issue. So some gentlemen are born with an extra X chromosome, which is something called Klinefelter's disease. Mm -hmm. And those, those Patients unfortunately don't make any sperm. Okay. At all. Not, okay. not at all. So you can also be born with um, cystic fibrosis, and often those patients have are missing the vas deferens, which is the tube that connects the testicle with the penis. Mm -hmm. And so the sperm is in the testicles, but it's mm -hmm. just not able to get out. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of things that, that can cause and that. can surgically be corrected. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, if they're not there, you can't fix it, mm -hmm. but we can go in and get the sperm out of the mm -hmm. testicle in other ways. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah, other, other causes are, um, other chronic diseases, things like diabetes, can affect your sperm production. Taking medication um, that affects your testosterone, so taking any extra testosterone actually decreases your sperm um, production. Taking steroids, so anabolic steroids to get a bit more buff, um, that stops your um, sperm production. Um, and it's crazy, if you take it in the morning, by that evening you will have no sperm. Really? But thankfully that's reversible, so if you stop, it'll come back, <laughs> but um, that can, can be a big issue. And for the athletes out there, I know um, sport injuries where you maybe get knocked on the groin also has an effect on your fertility. Definitely. How does that affect it and can that be corrected? Or So trauma is a big, a big issue, especially if it happens early on um, as a teenager, and these are usually soccer injuries. So. What can happen is if there's a lot of bleeding in that testicle, then that testicle may need to be removed or it may die. Um, but luckily you've got two, and so a lot of the time it's not a big issue. So you only need one. You only really need one. But if both of them are injured, then that is a big problem. Okay. You can also have issues when teenagers have mumps. So if you have mumps after you've gone through puberty, that can cause you to become sterile. Oh really? Yeah, and unfortunately that's not progressive. And scar tissue from sports injuries, is that also 
luck for the rest of your life. Unfortunately, it is. So if you have a sporting injury that affects both testicles, then that scar tissue will replace that healthy tissue that makes them. Okay. So Dr. Scar, how do you diagnose male infertility? So the first thing would be that you need to come and see a fertility specialist. And once you're here, we take a thorough history. We'd ask about all these things that we've been talking about, your exercise, your job, we'll ask about any previous injuries, any sicknesses, etc. You then have an examination where we just examine to see whether the um, testicles are present, whether they are normal size and volume and consistency, whether those vast difference, which are those pipes, are palpable, whether they're there, um, and whether the penis is normal um, in size and shape. Then we generally would go straight to doing a semen analysis. So what that involves is coming into the clinic and we have a private room where you give us a deposit and then we'd analyze that deposit and we'd look at a couple of factors. We'd look at the volume, we'd look at the concentration of sperm, we'd look at the motility of that sperm, so is it moving fast and forward, and then the shape of, of the sperm. Um, and by having a look at those factors, we can get a pretty good idea of the quality of that sperm. And so generally, that is where it ends with most men. But if we find a problem, then we need to go a step further. So that would then be taking some blood tests to look at your hormone levels to find out where exactly the problem is. So some gentlemen will come in and give us a sperm sample and that sperm sample will have absolutely no sperm in it. And then we need to decide, okay, is it because the sperm is not being made or is it because there's a blockage and the sperm is not getting out? And we'll do that by doing those blood tests. That's very interesting. I didn't know that a blood test can determine if there's a blockage or not. So how does that work? Well, basically, we measure the hormone levels and that can tell us whether the problem is in the brain, in the testicle, or whether it's a blockage. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. I didn't know that. So how do you go about treating these different male infertilities? Well, it depends on the cause. So first thing, if it's a lifestyle problem, then you've got to stop the smoking, you've got to stop the cycling, you've got to lose some weight, etc. If it's a chronic disease problem, then you need to get that diabetes under control. You need to make sure that that disease is as well controlled as possible to try and decrease the impact on the sperm. Um, sorry, chronic um, diseases like, for instance, cancer, HIV, or any of those things, how does that affect sperm? So HIV doesn't affect sperm too badly, although we wouldn't want to pass that HIV onto your partner or onto the offspring. So we would wash that sperm prior to, to using it and um, thereby decreasing the, the risk of transmission. Cancer definitely does affect um, sperm production and it also the treatment for cancer so chemotherapeutic drugs and radiation can kill your sperm cells so we have a fertility onco fertility program here where we ask um, gentlemen who are, are going to undergo chemo or radiation to come in and give us a, a few deposits just to preserve oh, their fertility yeah. yeah if the problem is that there is no sperm then we would do the blood test, we'd figure out where the problem is. If the problem is that there are insufficient hormones to make sperm, then we would give you medication to try and replace those hormones to help make more sperm. But if the problem is that there's a blockage, there is a surgery to try to re-anastomose um, those, those pipes. So if they're blocked due to a previous infection like chlamydia, then there is a surgery to, to fix that problem. But if you were born without those, those tubes, then unfortunately there's no operation to fix that. Mm -hmm. So what we would then do is we'd go straight to the testicle and we would, um, under anesthetic, we would then um, incise that testicle and remove the sperm straight from the testicle. Sure. And we could use that then for, for an IVF and ICSI procedure. All right. And um, mental health issues like depression, does that at all have an effect on male fertility? Definitely, that's a great question. So I get many, many patients um, coming to me saying that they're, they're trying and trying and they're just not, not able to conceive. And, you know, it's, it's tricky to perform on demand, mm -hmm. um, especially when it's been two years of trying. 
So yes, definitely um, mental um, disorders can have an impact on your ability or your tendency to want to have sexual intercourse mm -hmm. in the first place. Um, and anorgasmia can be a problem, erectile dysfunction can be an issue, and so definitely it, it But it doesn't have a direct in impact on the sperm itself? Generally not. Thank you so much Dr. Scott, it was very insightful. Um, is there any take-home message that you have for our viewers? Of course. So, for the men out there, if you feel that you may have a problem, if you have had a trauma to the testicle or mumps in the past or any of the things that we've been discussing, then rather come into a fertility specialist to a facility like Vita Lab and get it checked out sooner rather than later. Thank you so much and thank you guys for watching and we look forward to seeing you on episode 5.